Hello, and welcome to this week's look at stunts and action on film and television. How are you? Um, hopefully you're better than me. I've had one of those weeks where I've been doing many, many things, and I'm, I'm very conscious uh, as I get older, I'm 50, um, that there are things that I used to be able to do that maybe I can't do anymore, or I'm not prepared to do anymore, and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, I'm in a band, um, we play quite regularly, I was rehearsing the other day, and um, the playing is huge fun, always love playing, I'm a drummer, um, I sing a bit when absolutely necessary, and um, I'm always happy to do that, and, and I'm thrilled to do it. The loading and unloading of the car, still a pain in the ass, and I've tried desperately to make it simpler, and it's no easier. You know, so I've got to put my stuff in. That's a full drum kit, and all the uh, accoutrements that go with it, and a guitarist. So uh, we put all those bits and pieces in there with his amp and his selection of mini guitars, and uh, getting it from A to B, and then the unloading of it. And afterwards, I feel like I've run a marathon or been beaten with a stick. Now, uh, later on that evening. I was walking along my landing in my house upstairs from one room to the office where I am now um, and for reasons better known to somebody else just fell over. I don't know why, I don't know how, but I fell over and I landed awkwardly. Uh, I landed with my elbow tucked in to my rib cage, and um, now every time I breathe, speak, uh, laughing is really painful so I'm trying not to find anything funny but it's complicated because that's the way I am I just find everything funny um, so I've had to rethink a great many things or I've had to rethink a great many things uh, that I am due to do during the course of the week um, and of course because it's ribs it might just be bruising um, breathing isn't really that complicated uh i know that there there is pain there if you fracture or crack a rib or something of that nature but they don't do anything for it you know you don't get um any treatment for it particularly apart from please take care maybe strap them up for a bit so i've done the best i can uh and on the strength of that um the project that i did have in mind for this week and next week i've kind of had to knock it on the head a bit and we're going for a light approach um, from a reading perspective, because um, uh, I was checking some of my notes on Facebook and uh, the other social medias and on YouTube as well. And people were asking me questions in relation to uh, good stunt books or autobiographies that they may, uh, you know, not have read or may have read and want to see if they want to get into it. And, and, and could I throw a couple of curved balls in there at the same time? So I said, yes, certainly. That's what I'll do. I'll have a look at some of the good reading material that is available. If you are, uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you're a fan of action and stunts, um, there are some very, very good books out there. Now, um, I wanted to put a few together. Uh, some you may have read already, some you may not have done, but I think they're important and they're good to have in a collection. Um, I'm going to add another one a little later on, but I wanted to start with uh, this book here. There it is there. It is Stars, Stunts and Stories, and it is read, uh, read written by Carl Cefalio, um, a formidable uh, force of nature in the business of action. Um, very familiar face, has been in the business for many, many years. And this book documents uh, his uh, rise from leaving school, and uh, what he was planning on doing, leaving school, to ending up in the film business. Um, and there are some terrific uh, contents in here, some great chapters, some terrific pictures as well. And uh, it's a very good, it's an easy read, and that's the most important thing. Um, it doesn't matter, I suppose, what you read. If you If you find it complicated, and then you think, I'm only three chapters in, and this is hard work, it's the rest of it is likely to be hard work but all of these books i must say um that i'm going to have a look at today have been remarkably simple they are uh good reads and why are they good reads well because they they attract your attention they keep you um 
Uh, they keep you on the edge of your seat and you want to know. They're page turners. You want to know what's going on. And certainly this particular book is a great example of that. So if you are in a position to get hold of it, Stars, Stunts and Stories uh, by Carl Cefalio, I would urge you to do so. Uh, check it out. It was um, $16.95. I don't know what, what it is now. Maybe it's gone up. Uh, I dare say you can contact Carl. I'm just seeing if there's anything um specific about a year was this a couple was this 2018 19 maybe uh yes yeah, something like that so maybe check it out um if you're if you can't get hold of carl uh ryan publishing group at gmail.com uh is maybe the place to find it they are the people that are responsible for publishing that so that's a good start carl cefalia uh, a great uh, amount of work under his belt and similarly we go from hollywood um the hollywood hills to the shropshire hills for this next one this is british stunt performer justin pearson uh, there's his book there, Rolling with the Punches, it's called. They're from the Shropshire Hills to the Hollywood Hills, it says on the back. And again, Justin, uh, a very fine exponent of the art of stunt work in all capacities as a performer and now as a coordinator. Um, a varied career, and of course, a great deal of stuff with horses. There's some terrific pictures of him in here, as I don't know whether you can see that correctly, but as the, uh, 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 the knight, the black knight that he used to do on a... Um, uh, jousting team that he had uh, um, and I was lucky enough to see them in Belfast um, uh, many many moons ago but again a terrific story and going through his career lots of great uh, colour pictures in this as well uh, lots of on set stuff and uh, lots of uh, photographs with uh, with cast members and and uh, those great double photographs that you see but also you know it's it's a it's a case of, of uh, his life as the professional stuntman, going from, again, his early days working with horses, being around horses, having an ability around horses, and then maybe being able to use that ability in a slightly different capacity. So um, if you do get and a good photograph on the front there, he's uh, on fire on a warm, sunny day, walking towards a supercar. I mean, you know, that's not bad stuff, is it, really? Um, so do check it out. It was... Um, uh, 15 pounds when it came out last year i think it was um a way with media is the uh, the publishing group here so if you uh, if you get an opportunity to check that out do so please uh, that's well worth a look rolling with the punches by justin pearson a british stunt performer so i would urge you to do that um uh, another one with fire on the uh, on the cover but of course a huge amount of history um is uh, is this one here which is man on fire uh, and it is jim dowdle's book um his uh, his life as a stunt performer the life and other accidents of jim dowdle um and the forward is by uh, james may who of course was one of the original top gear guys um this is a good uh, a good read particularly from the type of the type of history that uh, and background that Jim has had, um, he's now chairman of the stunt committee, and uh, is was there at the very start um, back in 1973, and has again had such a varied career. We know um, Jim through his his, his work um, with Bapti, the Armourers, and uh, this book outlines some of those stories, uh, some which you've heard over the years but but many you haven't and his uh, technical knowledge uh, for anything military anything engine based fascinated by that type of stuff and you find that a lot of coordinators tend to go in that direction you know when they've discovered stuff they have a passion for it and they explore it well whenever there's a war movie uh, being filmed whether it's here or anywhere else in the world for that matter uh, nine times out of ten a phone call will happen and jim dowdle will be um consulted upon re this particular type of tank track or this particular type of sprocket or spindle uh, that may be used on this particular vehicle he's extremely knowledgeable and loves all of that sort of stuff and if there is anything that is weapon based um jim is your man there's a terrific 
story in here about where he was actually firing a live round in the direction of Laurence Olivier. Um, and uh, if you haven't heard that story, I, that's probably uh, well worth looking at the best of times. Man on Fire is the book and it is all about Jim Dowdle. Uh, so I urge you to look at that as well. Uh, another book uh, now from one of the guys who was there at the very start, and uh, and this is a storming book because uh, this this really is a belter, uh, quite literally. This is Nosha. Uh, it's the story, the life of uh, Nosha Powell, of course, the father of Greg and Gary, and uh, uh, the grandfather of Tilly. And uh, on the cover it says uh, uh, Nosha, and at the bottom it says, When I hit you, you stay bloody it. Uh, because from his boxing career, of course, uh, starting out uh, with, the, with the boxing, starting out, of course, on Billingsgate Fish Market. Um, and uh, some terrific pictures in here. Great boxing photographs, uh, a great many wonderful stories uh, about him growing up. And then later on in life, taking on a different persona because Nosha went from being a stuntman and a ranger um, to being more a, a celebrity, if you will. Um, there was a, a movie called Eat the Rich, if you remember. Of course, he starred in that uh, as Nosha, uh, who became prime minister um, through the comic strip. And uh, his persona uh, would get him on to varying television shows uh, in character he of course had a pub always had pubs um, and they were uh, great places for individuals from the business to come along and uh, explore um, great stories and have good times and also his work as a minder or bodyguard um, for some of the rich and famous who would come to town and he would look after them so this just it's really really very good and again all of these very very good reads great simple reads um page turners and uh, there's some lovely moments in this so it's it's well well worth a read check that one out um this is from quite some time ago this was about 15 pounds i think when i bought it um when did this come out i think this got 1999 it was first published um uh, by blake publishing i don't know whether that's still in print or whether you can still get hold of it but maybe there are uh copies knocking about um check the usual sources for that ebay and stuff of that nature if you are struggling or maybe contact the publisher direct see if they can assist you but that's well worth checking out as well and a final two one of course that is regarded by many as a bible uh, but uh, you wouldn't get very far if you didn't have a copy of vic's book uh, and it is quite a big book that um the uh Story of the World's Greatest Stuntman um, by Vic and uh, Richard, uh, Robert Sellers, I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, Mr. Spielberg has uh, written the foreword on this as an introduction. Again, it is one of those books that kind of culminates everything. Vic, I seem to remember for a period of time, was doing lots of interviews. Um, and if you remember, he, he did an interview with me uh, on on this show uh, a couple of years back in connection with his work on Bond and then kind of stopped doing them because on the strength of that you got everything that you could possibly want in the book and I, I do see how you over time when you've written something of that nature you think to yourself well maybe I don't need to do these interviews anymore because all the information is here. It's, it's very simply a, a case of picking the book up. But th there is something about doing what you're doing and being able to have that tory, story told to you in a slightly different way instead of reading it page by page. Again, it's very well written. Um, it looks very good and uh, and it's a, it's a good weighty uh, contribution to anything and again the photographs and this is this is massively important i think that the many of the photographs in this in this book you won't have seen before um you know there are there are many terrific bits and pieces there's there's um um i've been lucky enough to go to vic's house and um when you go into his study um it's just all the walls are covered with these remarkable uh, photographs uh, many dedicated to him signed by the actors by the directors 
um, and uh, some of those you will see in here uh, if you haven't seen them already for the very first time there's many terrific um, uh, terrific uh, color pictures uh, uh, and I think at the time this came out it's probably working on Valkyrie maybe I guess as, a, as an action director with Tom Cruise so it's around about that sort of time terrific stuff and really if you don't have a copy of that you really should there it is uh, the world the uh, the uh, the adventures of the world's greatest stuntman that is Vic Armstrong's book um, there is also another really very 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 good book you know um, called Jump Rocky Jump it's about Rocky Taylor funnily enough uh, uh, written by uh, well <clears throat> and um, a forward uh, by Ray Winston, a very interesting photograph of the, in the in the in the front of that book. By uh, yes, uh, but um, uh, again, one of the this is the reason why I read it. So these type of books that when we were writing this book, it was important based on what we'd read before to make sure that it was an easy read. As I said to you at the top of all of this, having these books is great, but if you get a couple of chapters in and you think, this is really hard work, then it's not really doing what it's supposed to be doing. And I urge you to uh, read some of these books and try and get a flavour of of what it is to be a, a performer at the time. You know, if, if the content and if the... Uh, if the, the author is giving that to you and you feel at ease with the whole thing and you feel, yes, I'm, get, I'm, under, I'm getting an understanding of what they're trying to tell me, then that's half the battle. Uh, for me, the, the most difficult thing I found when writing the book originally was sounding like Rocky. And uh, I was... I know how he sounds. I'd spent a great, a huge amount of time with him. I'm very familiar with his tone of voice. But there are certain words and certain things that he says that make those around him comfortable. Uh, his wife, Pamela, for instance, is a good example. Uh, when I gave it to her at first, the um, the uh, manuscript to uh, to have a look at, and she read some of it, she said that this maybe just, uh, he wouldn't say that, and he wouldn't say this. Okay, okay, right, so we go back and we make changes here and there. And then a little later down the line, she went, yeah, I could hear his voice then. I thought, right, I've got it. And that, that was key. Once you've got that, then you are in, you're going in the right direction because it's important that uh, the, the work sounds like the, uh, sounds like the subject. And we were, we were very lucky, I think, to get, to, to get this book together and to, to make it work the way it has. Uh, and, again, some marvellous stories and, and some terrific... Um, terrific uh, pictures in there as well some that that many will never have seen again uh, never have seen before but it's it's a it's a very important read and something that i think should be considered uh, on the list of those books that uh, that are important going forward now on the subject of books that are important now and that were important then and some things just haven't changed but here is a book that you really should see now, this one is a Bible, for me anyway. I think it's absolutely fascinating. It is Stunting in the Cinema. And uh, it is co-written by uh, Arthur Wise and Derek Ware. Now, Derek, as you know, um, is uh, um, responsible for Stunts on Doctor Who, uh, all sorts of shows within that period that some others do happen with the Havoc organisation. There are some great pictures on the back as well of Derek in action. And um, Arthur Wise is a film historian. Couple that with Derek's knowledge of the business with uh, the silent era and jousting. Uh, of course, a member of the uh, um, organisation, the British Fight Directors. And you have a book which really does explain to the very best of its ability many, many subjects that will crop up on a regular basis within the film business. If you ever asked anybody, how do they do that? Um, I've often wondered how you do this. Well, you know, that's your first port of call. And not only that, but it does explain things very simply and also in, in diagram form. So if you are stuck 
Uh, if you're a visual learner, for instance, then there are many pictures in here to explain, look, here's the words, and then this is what we mean by that. Um, the running W is a very good example of, of, of something that, when you explain it, sounds actually quite complicated, but then in the book, they show you diagrams of that and how it works, and, and uh, it does tend to make a great deal more sense it's outlawed of course they don't use it anymore but nevertheless the principle and the science behind the whole thing is captured there so i really do and again i'm not entirely convinced that this is available to uh, obtain anymore uh, this was printed 1968 69 maybe um i was lucky enough to get this uh, many many moons ago from a library sale believe it or not um, when I found it um, I think I found it in when did I find it in uh, 1989 uh, is when I found it in and this was first printed here we go uh, 1973 printed in 1973 um, by constable and company and again many of these uh, many of these publishing houses may not even be around anymore you know but if you want to get a copy of that well that uh, that's like pulling hen's teeth so that is something that you are definitely going to have to have a, a little look at hunting around and, and uh, become a Sherlock Holmes and another one that needs looking at is this one and on the subject of rare as hen's teeth this is definitely one of them. It is Bob Simmons' Nobody Does It Better. Um, brought out a well, year before his death, maybe, uh, same year, 87. And uh, it is the story of how he got in to the business through uh, Warwick Films, particularly. His work in those early pictures through the 40s and 50s and his background story. Um, so there's a lot of work. Uh, he covers a lot of Bond uh, up to about some location thing up towards the, the back end of 83 and 85. And again, it is, it's, it's a great read. Um, it's a bit complicated in places because maybe his memory isn't what it was or things of that nature, but there, there are a, a few moments in there which are uh, um, a bit peculiar. However, uh, on the basis of it, it's it's well worth looking for. And again, if you can find it, you know, back in the day, this was two pounds and ninety five pence when it came out in nineteen eighty seven. Uh, nowadays, I would say, if you were looking for this online, you may well find it. If you do find it, you will find it for probably sixty or seventy pounds because it, I believe it only came out in paperback, and um, it's got um, it's got a lovely yellowy type content to it the page work is slight the font's quite small too so if you're like me with with not the best eyes in the world you have to you know hold it up quite close um but there's some lovely stories again great pictures and uh, it just sort of gives you a flavor of what it was like to be a performer back in those days particularly somebody of uh, of the stature of Bob Simmons, who has told uh, taught so many uh, individuals uh, and many of the people that um, the books that we have looked at, particularly from the British side of the business. So do try and check that out. If you are able to find it, it will be well worth a look. So that's it uh, for this week. Just a brief one while I'm still convalescing. And um, hopefully next week we'll all be back to square one and uh, we'll carry on where we left off. But until then, it's bye for now.